Hey YouTube, how's your day going? I mean, it's war got a major warming deal going on here. It's nice. I'd like to be out in the sun, but that would screw up the, the recording, I think. So, you know, some people are looking around and wondering what's going on with this Antifa and BLM and all this, you know, violence. I think there's like almost 700 incidents of recorded violence against conservatives. Um, you know, I, I would, I think we're seeing the dissolution of the United States. I mean, I think it's already dissoluted. That's probably not a word. And we're just seeing, you know, how that manifests itself. You know, the definition of a country is, uh, it's the territory, you know, of a kingdom or a government. But the definition of a nation of a nation is a little bit different. You know, it's a uh, it's a people united by a common descent, history, culture, and in culture, I'm going to throw in religion because you can't ignore that with our founding fathers. Um, and religion then was different than it is now, so I don't feel bad about using the word religion. Okay, in language. It's premature, but I'll throw this in. If I remember right, in Broward County, you know, where they're having all the recounts, I think they have voting, uh, they have the ballots in 60-some languages. That's crazy. So, uh, so I think this, I think this, in my opinion, this country's been going downhill a long time. And, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to throw this in. Uh, in 1871, February 21st, Congress passed an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia, also known as the Act of 1871. With no constitutional authority to do so, Congress created a separate form of government for the District of Columbia, a 10-mile square piece, parcel of land. The act passed when the country was weakened and uh, financially depleted in the aftermath of the War of the Rebellion was a strategic move by foreign interests, international bankers, who were intent upon gaining, gaining a stranglehold on the coffers and neck, you know, of America. Yeah, I'm not trying to make you a sovereign citizen, and it's actually too late for all that. But it's like, why would you spend, what did, what did Beto spend now down in uh, Texas? 50 million to get a job that pays 170,000. <laughs> How did Feinstein become a billionaire on 170000 a year? <laughs> it's funny. Uh, but anyhow, so people have been working at, you know, getting the meat off the bones of this country for a long time. Uh, you know, the Founding Fathers left quotes like, we all agreed enough on religion to pray together. Um, don't think for one minute they'd have ever allowed a house of worship um, to be built that didn't worship some form of their version of God. You know, God is the term used, it's a Germanic term, if you chase it down, used uh, for something that's cast, like you would cast an idol. Um, But it wasn't freedom from religion, you know, it was freedom of religion. And there is no separation, or there was no separation of church and state. You know, that was in a letter that Jefferson wrote. It's, it's, not, in the, it's not in the Constitution. Uh, so I'm just trying to lay a little bit of a background here. You know, we were an exceptional country. People left everything they knew, and they left their relatives, and they left a lot when they came to this country to carve a piece of the wilderness out. To, uh, to make a living on. And uh, that did create, that did create uh, an exceptional country because you had so many people that were such go-getters. Uh, but do you think that's the case now? So, you know, so what, what are we dealing with here? Frederick Bastier, I would call him a political scientist, but he called himself something else, I, I forget. But he said everyone, one of his quotes, Everyone wants to live at the expense of the state. They forget that the state wants to live at the expense of everyone. <laughs> so, 
So uh, competing for the money that you earn and the money that I earn are the freeloaders and the government. You know, and, and as far as I'm concerned, taxation is stuff. Hey, see, I had to get on my dogs. Get! Get! We've got a cat here and a, a dog took exception to it. Uh, and he also, Frederick Bastier, B-A-S-T-I-A-T, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but he also said you could stop any farmer in the field and they knew exactly what was been, being discussed in the halls of Congress. Is that the case now? You know, I know people who, the news scares them so they don't watch the news. They don't have any idea what's going on. Not that the news tells you anything if you just, you know, NBC or CBS or ABC. Uh, you know, when the pilgrims arrived here, they kept the Sabbath. The Sabbath is on a Saturday. In over a hundred different languages, um, the day we call Saturday is some form of the word Sabbath. It might be sabuto, sabato. Um, also, you know, Israel's been keeping the Sabbath since the days, certainly since the days of Moses. They know what day it's on. And finally, it's in the dictionary if you have, you know, that's kind of a tangent. But, but uh, and Christmas, for instance, holidays, Christmas was illegal here in New England until 1856. So, more background. So this country, you know, was created by Northern Europeans. Okay, it was not this melting pot, this A-team of, uh, you know, a group of people from every country around the globe. It was founded by Northern Europeans. And Northern Europeans who, who agreed enough on the subject of God that they could pray together. And you can see that in Christianity and the Constitution. That's a very good book, Christianity and the Constitution. And it discusses the main framers of the Constitution, what they read, that, that we know what they read, uh, and what their thoughts were. And it's good to know what they read because you can go read it and you can get, you know, you can further understand, you know, how they synthesize the inputs to their brains. Uh, just this morning, I saw in California where they're looking at banning Christian textbooks. <laughs> are we still that country? We are no longer that country. Enter in these elections. You know, I dare say that most people in Congress have no respect for uh, for God or the Constitution. Um, they're not going to be happy until they're sitting around that uh, United Nations 2030 roundtable of global rule. And then they'll be fighting each other until, you know, for more power, until the anti-Messiah shows up. And, you know, all these, Demo all these Democratic senators have signed on to open borders. Uh, and even at that, <laughs> the left wants to get rid of the Senate. Because, you know, all the leaders in, in Congress, uh, in the Senate and in the uh, House of Representatives are all from the coast. You know, this flyover country just chaps them where they sit, okay? <laughs> they, you know, our, the founders were geniuses in giving us a republic, you know, and the electoral college. I mean, at least, you know, in the Senate, Missouri still has... <laughs> Still has, uh, you know, two votes. Shema. No bar, no growling while I'm doing a video. Uh, and even though you know the Seventeenth Amendment, they neutered the Senate because this, this, your state government's supposed to pick the senators. That way, the Senate, that way, the uh, your state had an input into what the Senate decided. So, and that's gone now. Now, these cats get elected and they're just free to do what they want for six years. So, uh, don't think Trump's going to save you. You know, how, how, how's that wall going? How, what mile are we on of it? You know, they're not going to let him. They're not going to let him do that. Uh, now, and having said that, don't get me wrong, everything Trump's done, I've agreed with. You know, reducing regulations cutting taxes but uh, and then all these evangelicals you know they think he's a Christian well a couple nights ago he was uh, 
at some Hindu dinner, you know, praising the virtues of, of them. So, you know, I don't know where he's at when it comes to his relation with the Most High. But, and you might say that's personal, but I don't think it is personal because he's the leader of this country. And we're going to, you know, he, yeah, I just think it's part of my business. So we have the rabid left who hates the creator, and then we have the right, the conservatives that want to worship him the way they want to worship him. You know, the God is, is uh, he's pretty succinct in what he expects of us, and it's in his Torah, which is the first five books of the Old Testament. And of course, we know what, and in the New Testament, what Yeshua, his son, did for us. But, you know, we all want our Christmases you know, we want NASCAR on the Sabbath. What's what's the most high going to do with us? So, what do we do? I mean, this you know, this country's crumbling around us. Well, you know, we better get our relationship with God squared away. And then on the physical side of things, you know, you need if you had psychology one hundred and one, you know what Maslow's hierarchy was. You know, you start, it's a uh, it's a uh, pyramid of needs, pyramid. At the bottom is like heat, food, and water. Then then is relationships, then is education, and then is the very top, at the tippy top, is uh, self-actualization. You know, you've become everything that you're capable of. Well, you better be working on that bottom, which is the heat, water, and food. And you better have a house that's paid for, and you better have some property associated with the house to garden on and to ha have a little animal husbandry. And you need to have, and, and you know what people tell me? Well, I'll grow food when I have to. Well, you know, I'll raise, you know, milk goats when I need to. But that's, that's not a turnkey deal. You don't, you don't just uh, go out and buy your goats and tomorrow you're successful. Same with gardening. There's a learning curve associated with this stuff. I've been doing this for years and on. I'm no good at it, but I'm better than I used to be. And you, and you need to have some money squirreled away to pay pay your taxes. Um, you know this. We have a 21 trillion dollar national debt, and then there's this professor. I think his name's Mark. I know his last name's Skidmore. I think he's up in he's up north somewhere in Minnesota, where they found another 21 trillion that has been funneled through the Department of the Army and HUD. Uh, so really, we have a national debt of like 42 trillion, and with the old debt, <laughs> it's acknowledged. And now this is classified, not since he found it. But anyhow, with the old debt of 21 trillion, they said it was all over when the 10-year Treasury bill hit 3 percent. Well, last time I looked, it was 3.14 percent. So this thing's going to crash, and and then credit's going to be locked up, and the little grocery and grocery stores won't be getting. You know, all this runs on credit. So are, are they going to be able to resupply the grocery stores? You know, you better have some food stashed away. And you should have some textbooks squirreled away to uh, educate your kids. Um, and by the way, you know, what are your kids doing in, public, in government schools? I don't understand that. Make it a priority to get them out of there. I was just looking through a little 11-year-old girl's library book and uh, the whole book is dedicated to making you to want to join the drama department so you can hang out with uh, boys who have given up the uh, natural use of women in Romans 127 you can look that up and see what it is but they're not interested these boys aren't interested in girls do we really need for an 11 year old girl to read that I mean can 10 year olds check this out or 9 year olds or 8 year olds <laughs> but, hey Get them out of the get them out of, get them away from the government. Get your kids under your control. Uh, yeah, get your food under your control. Your house under your control. <laughs> Everything, because these these people aren't going to be watching out for you. So that's just kind of a, I guess it's a rant. I don't know, but I hope something resonated with you. I think I'm average. <laughs> Maybe I'm not. But thanks for listening. <laughs>